Good morning, my little quarantines. It's probably not morning if we're honest with ourselves. Today we're gonna to be learning to make the accordion paintings or the zigzag paintings. They're not really always paintings. In fact, you're probably not gonna be painting at home. You, know, you got markers, colored pencils, crayons, it does not much matter. The process is what matters. So we're gonna to learn to make this. Does that look confusing and not like much? Well, does that look better? Yes, it does. That's a lovely tree in a field. And does that look better? Yes, it's a gorgeous moonlit boat. Let me show you the breakdown of what is involved. First of all, you'll need paper. We're gonna go with eight and a half by five and a half, which is an eight and a half by 11 sheet cut in half. The heavier paper is the better. So if you have cardstock or just some thick printer paper, it would be ideal. You're going to need a pencil for marking things, a ruler for measuring things, masking tape for assembling things, scissors for disassembling things, and markers, crayons, pens, colored pencils, paint, pencils, whatever you have, charcoal, might get a little messy, but you can try it. Whatever you have to make your images. Landscapes. So when we talk about landscapes, for our purposes, landscape means two things, and it's pretty loose. Landscape refers not just to the image, but also to the way the paper's held. Landscape just means it's horizontally oriented. But in terms of art, a landscape can refer to anything that's really existing in 3D space. So a mountain scene at night, a cityscape with a bridge, a palm tree with the sun setting behind it across a lonely island, outer space, the forest, the jungle, the Arctic, the bottom of the ocean, your kitchen countertop, any one of these things could be considered a landscape. The bottom line is you want these to look different because in the final product, the more different they look, the better it's going to look all together. Also, keep in mind, you're going to want to fill your paper up with color, with marks. You don't want one little pencil drawing in the middle. That will not look good in the final product. You want to fill this up, go from edge to edge, top to bottom, and add all the color or all the tone you can. After I've drawn both my images, I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to mark the backs. Now, we want to pay attention to which way is up. The top is where you're going to make your marks and label it to start. Okay, so we're going to be doing half inch increments. Now, as you can see from my cutting mat, I have half inch increments already. If you don't know how to use a ruler, I would not be overly surprised because I'm not everyone's learning rulers in school anymore. But, on your ruler, one equals an inch, I think you all know that. If you look at this midpoint here though, that is the half inch. If you wanna go further, you have a quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth, and thirty-second of the tiny ones. We're gonna be using the half inch increment. So the midpoint between zero and one. We're going to take our increments every half inch and we're gonna make what's called a hatch mark. Hatch mark is just a little line and I'm going right off the edge of the paper with my pencil. And I'm using the ruler. Every half inch. One half, one. One and a half, two. Two and a half, three. All the way down the line. Then I'm gonna come here on the bottom and do the same thing. I do both for when I connect the lines. If you have eight and a half by five and a half, you'll have 17 separate strips at the end of this. So I'm going back to the top. Remember, I want to keep it oriented up. So I want to know that this is the top, and this is the top. And I'm going to number it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I want these numbers to be very clear. To make my life a little bit easier, I want to take these, take the ruler and line up between the hatch marks. Hatch mark to hatch mark. I'm going to draw a line. Go all the way down the line, and I'm just going to have, at the end of this, I'm just going to have half inch increments. So you're going to continue that on all the way down until you have this, which is much easier to see. Angle. Wow. Anyway, once we've drawn our drawings, once we've made our marks on the back, very nice, we're going to cut them. So, if you have a paper cutter, first of all, what do your parents get into that you have a paper cutter at home? Second of all, it's going to be easier. But we don't have a paper cutter. I'm assuming you don't either. I do. I have two in here, but shh. 
Anyway, I'm going to just cut with my scissors along these lines. I'm going to do as good a job I can. Who here knows how to use scissors properly that they know to drag as they go? Luckily, I've numbered these, and I can just kind of let them fall wherever they do. Is this exciting? I'm going to make you watch me cut each and every one of these. Just kidding. No, I'm not. That's boring. That beautiful mountain scene at night, I have since chopped into little bits. So, as you can see, I have it in order. But wait, do I have it in order? Something looks a little off. Well, let me look. There's number one, that's where it should be. There's number two, that's where it should be. Boy, wasn't I smart to have numbered these in advance? I'm gonna look right around here because something looks a little odd. So, number nine, number 11, luckily I drew these nice and clear so I know that 11 shouldn't be there, and 10 should be there. Now it looks a little bit better. You may have noticed while I was doing that little exercise that the numbers which we drew going left to right now appear going right to left on the back. All right, my co-conspirators, the moment is here. Notice I now have two pieces of art that have been measured and cut in half-inch increments. Each piece has a number on the back. Obviously, you can't see that because it's on the back. But... They are in numerical order, and at this stage, it's easy to see that they're in numerical order because you can make out the image. I'm going to take my tape. I prefer masking tape. You can use other tapes, but masking tape is the best for what we're doing. I'm making a piece that's as long as both of these strips, okay? And I'm going to set it upside down. I'm going to take number one, and I'm going to set it down toward the bottom, can you see where I'm working on this? I hope you can. Okay, I'm gonna put it down toward the bottom. And I'm gonna take number one and this one. And I'm gonna put it down. Now, one thing. Try and line up your bottoms nicely. Hopefully your pieces of paper are the same size. And if they're not, that's all right. I have a slight difference in the sizes here. I don't care. Now, you wanna try and make sure that they're all straight up in the same angle. Because if you start putting them out at angles, it won't fold properly. Now you also want to make sure that you don't have them too close together so that there's overlap, but not so far apart that there's gaps. You'd rather a slight gap than an overlap, but you really don't want either. You want them to be together. You want a hair's breadth in between them, but you really want them close. So now I'm going to take number two, set it down, and I'm going to take number two, notice my little number two, and set it down. And I am just going to go like that. Three. And I'm going to go three and three. And I'm going to go four and four. And if you have not yet seen a pattern evolving, you should. Wonderful. Now, all my pieces are in place. You'll notice that the top is still floppy. That's okay, particularly uh, the painted one, which curled more. The bottom still has a bit of curling also. What we're going to do now is we're going to flip this bad Jackson over. Poor Jackson, it's such a bad name. If you think you're slick, you can try and do the whole thing in one piece. I don't think I'm that slick. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to do it in segments. I'm going to set it down, and I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to just gently line things up a little, because some splitting happened, like some pieces didn't go perfectly parallel to other pieces, and that's natural. It's nothing to panic about. I just don't want overlap, because overlap is not our friend. Overlap is our enemy. Take some of this extra, because I am very cheap, and your caregivers 
will approve of my cheapness because you're using their tape. Because I doubt you went and bought your own tape. Get a job, hippies. And I'm moving it over here. I use as many tape, pieces of tape as I need to get across. There's nothing that says it has to be in one piece. I've already used three and I will probably need a fourth. There's my fourth piece right here. Okay, so it's in place. It's in place. If I'm worried about the curling, now I can do this and it gets easier. And I can go right along the bottom. And I can go. There are advantages and disadvantages to doing this across the middle. The advantage is it will stay in place better. The disadvantage is that it will be harder to fold it the more tape you put down. This is fine. But if I were to cover the whole back and if you're using something thicker like duct tape, why are you using duct tape for this? Seriously, have I taught you nothing? The next thing we're going to do... So we're going to fold it like a fan, okay? Now, just take this and fold them back and forth, back and forth. If you have overlaps, this is where it gets problematic because overlaps will prevent you from folding things because it'll want to like put one piece of paper over another and it never overlaps in a convenient way, always overlaps in the worst possible way. I have just folded a nice accordion or a fan. Now, if I had put big gaps in between my spaces, the tape would be sticking to itself right now, like it's doing right here in the middle. But the more gaps, the more the tape sticks. And the more annoyed you're going to get. And come out here, and I could just pull apart those parts where the tape stuck to itself. And I have an accordion. While it's on the table, before I mount it, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. See your tree with your field. And then as we move, it goes and becomes my ship with the moonlight behind it. Or boat, probably not a ship. As you can see, I've cut a piece of cardboard. Now, could I have painted it first? Sure. Did I? No. Will you? Well, that's entirely up to you. So, it is six and a half by 13. I'm just going to use regular glue all. Is it more than I need? Probably. But do I know what I need yet? No, not really. I'm going to use a little bit of extra glue right there. I'm going to set it on. I can assume it's not going to be perfect because I'm not perfect. Now I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to be gentle because the glue is wet. See? In closing. One way one art, one way other art. Drippy. But not the good kind of drippy. The glue's still wet kind of drippy. Five. Five. I broke it. 